let's be honest. Do you really trust the press? I don't care if you're left or right or center, but can we really trust the press? Chase Lee Hockey here with the Blue Futon reviewing Civil War. So what's about? Pretty simple premise. According to this movie, or according to Alex Garland, we are divided into multiple factions in the United States. You have the Western Front, which is California and Florida. Then you have the Florida Alliance, which is kind of the southern part, and it stops, I believe, in Oklahoma. And it's kind of like the Tennessee-Kentucky line. Then you have like the Allegiance, which is everything on the northeast coast, and it comes all the way down and it scoops in, like Nebraska. You have Colorado. Then you have, no, it's not Utah. Then you go down to like Nevada. And that is that. Then you have the people's whatever in the northern part. But anyway, it's the Western forces. California and Texas are about to invade D.C. And these journalists are wanting to get an interview with the president before it happens. So, did I like this film? It was it was good. It was good, but it was nothing that everyone keeps giving it 10 out of 10, 5 out of 5s, 4 out of 4s. There's just too many glaring flaws in this movie, which I'm just like, come on now. Are we really talking about it in this way? Anyway, so we'll talk about the 4DX because I did see Civil War in 4DX. And don't you don't need to spend that money. You don't need to spend that money on 4DX. Yes, yes. With this movie, you have a couple wind scenes, a couple shaky cam scenes. But other than that, you're not going to get huge movements whatsoever. And the reason I say that is they're just the action sequences when they're there, they're more stationary. They're not more, you know, they're grounded. They are not like in the weeds like Michael Bay style of drones or um, what's the other movie made? Ambulance. No, this is very, very much, you know, let's move the camera on a dolly. And those type of action set pieces. So you're not going to get the shaky cam, the Godzillas, the Meg. So if you want to see this in IMAX and RPX instead, uh, that's where I would go with. Because 40X, not worth the $7, $8 surcharge. Because I do the Unlimited for Regal. So it is only a $7, $8 surcharge. So, But if you add that up, it's like $22, $25 a ticket for some locations around the world. Anyway, so when talking about this movie, I do think the acting is extremely well done with everyone involved. If I had to choose one that I didn't like the greatest, it was be the girl that played uh, Priscilla. I forgot her name, so I'm sorry about that. Uh, her character kind of annoyed me, and some of her character choices overall just felt Nightcrawler-ish. And what I mean by that, I don't mean the X-Men. I mean the Jake Gyllenhaal movie, and I'll get to that in the negatives because, like I said, the three glaring flaws overall in this movie. I do like that we got different sides of the story. And what do I mean by that? Because we start this movie in New York City, then we're trying to go down to Charlotte as well as DC to interview the president. Uh, when we get there, you get sides of, I guess you call it random Joes facing against the military, which I still want to understand like where is this coming from? Because if you're in the People's Alliance, if I'm reading the map correctly, why are they fighting the military people? It almost found, sounds like it should be the Florida Alliance fighting the military on that level. But then here's the other thing about that. Yeah, I understand that we get both sides of the story when seeing them fighting the military people. But we don't really know who the military is for. Is it the Western Front's military? Is it the Florida Alliance military? Because they all are wearing the same OCPs. Except the difference is the flag they wear. Are they going to wear the two-star flag? which I still think California and Texas, like, having their own flag, them together, is pretty fucking hysterical when you had that huge gap between Texas and Florida with that landmass. Uh, but that's just weird nitpicks that you really got to think about in this movie that really are unbelievable. So you get that. But then there's another scene where they're going through this winter wonderland, and they're just talking to these random Joes. Are they in the military? I doubt it because of the fingernails, the hair, how... Everything was looking at almost like a paintball match, if you want to put it that way, with some of their makeup. And then you go to the DC line where you're where they are with the Western forces. So I understand the press is getting all these people and how they know everyone. It still feels like some of these forces would be like, I don't want press near me, and they like just get the fuck away from me. And you don't get that in this movie, which I find very interesting that the only pushback was the Jesse Plummon scene. And you don't even know if he was really part of a military 
you, you just don't know. You just know he was wearing the camel because I didn't see a flag on his uh, OCPs or anything like that. So it's very open-ended to how you want to portray some of these people and who they're actually backing, if you want to put it that way. Um, I do, like I said, Christian Dunst, I thought she did a good job. The guy did a very good job. I think the overall action set pieces were done pretty good. The gunplay felt grounded. It didn't feel like anything bombastic. It felt like people that were training these actors really knew what they were doing, especially with some of the flanking movements, some of the positionings when going to door-to-door movements. It felt like they did research, and I think Alex Garland did a good job there. What I just have an issue with is some of the characters themselves as well as character choices. That is my biggest glaring flaw in this movie. Uh, I know a lot of people are saying like Christian Dunst is a you know not likable character, and I kind of disagree. I just think she's she has enough PTSD for what she's seen because there are flashbacks in this movie. You could tell from like different wars against different nations in Africa or the Iraq, Afghanistan. So you do get that glimpse of what she's seen in her past. So I didn't have an issue with her character of like being unlikable. I, I just didn't see that personally. What, like I said, I didn't like the character of the 23-year-old. To me, she was the most annoying. Her character decisions made no sense. Okay, there's one in the beginning. I don't say in the beginning, in the halfway mark with two vehicles. That's all I'm going to say, so I don't want to spoil it. They only did that to lead to that Jesse Plumman scene. And it's just something that I just don't think she would ever do. The whole point of her doing this is trying to learn from her hero. So why would she do this thing that makes no goddamn sense? Like it just added this. They added this part to wanting to do this Jesse Plummet scene. And it just felt like they wanted to do this Jesse Plummet scene because Christian Dunst and him are married. I don't know. It just felt off overall. Number two, the ending of what happens in the last five minutes. What these Okay, let's, we can do that, but then we'll go like 15 minutes before that. There's a mental breakdown, I'll say that. And it just, I understand how it could occur, but it just felt weird that it happened and it kind of disappeared within 15 seconds. It was like an anxiety attack or a panic attack for 10 minutes and it just went away. And I was like, okay. And then the last five minutes, it felt like a night crawler scenario where <laughs> I hated it. I hated the last five minutes. I, I want to say I hated the last like one minute of the story, which makes sense. But the main guy character, the 23-year-old, literally just ignore what happens to other characters involved. And I'm just like, what the fuck? This is not, this is not making sense. This is does not correlate with anything I've watched this past hour and 45 minutes. It doesn't work. The ending doesn't work. Not with... When I say the ending, you're thinking like, oh, when the credits roll. No, it's what happens like the five minutes before the credits roll does not work for me. It, It's a downhill spiral for me. And I'm like, what the fuck were you thinking at the point? Because it's like, yes, I understand what you're going for. But no, it does not correlate. And I think that's what Alex Garland does worst. I'm sorry. It's these twists and turns he does at the end of this movie. He's like, man, fucking horrendous ending. Civil War. Hated the ending. Ex Machina wasn't a fan of the ending. Annihilation wasn't a fan of the ending. His endings don't do it for me. And I think that's the biggest problem with Alex Garland movies. Through and throughout. Do I own Ex Machina? Yes. Do I know own Annihilation? Yes. Do I own Men? Never. Civil War, I will probably own it. But Alex Garland and endings just don't work for me. So overall, Civil War 40X. Skip the 40X. It is not worth it. Uh, I am intrigued at this box office overall because they're still saying when I'm filming this that Godzilla could still beat Civil War. And I'm just wondering, is Civil War going to have good word of mouth exiting the movie theater? I don't think so. So I could see Godzilla leapfrogging, you know, Civil War next weekend. But how will Abigail do? No clue. How will the Ungentlemanly Warfare do? No clue. Interesting for next week. But anyway... See it if you're intrigued, but is it a must-go watch? I don't think so. So Civil War will receive a 3.5 out of 5 of Futons, which equals at 70%. So see the critics and user scores gave this one. So have critics say 83% with 230, 243 of them. Audience scores 77 the fewer, uh, over 250 critic consensus. 
tough and unsettling by design, Civil War is a gripping close-up at the violent uncertainty of life in a nation in crisis. Sure, I would agree with that, but yeah, like I said, Alex Garland and endings don't do it for me. 70, 83, 77, Chase, Lee Hockey, here with the Blue Futon, like, comment, subscribe. Let me know everything's Blue Futontopia, you Blue Futoners, thank you for watching a great day, and I can watch this take tomorrow, week, from month, or a year from now, every single freaking one of you. And like I said, 40x, no need for this one.